So the Nintendo Direct just wrapped up. There was a lot of games talked about in this. We're going to skip the intro and get right into things. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. But let's talk about this Nintendo Direct. Whether this Nintendo Direct was hype, whether it was worth the anticipation and the long wait since we've had a standard Nintendo Direct, or if maybe it was a bit disappointing for some people. Now, kicking things off, we got our brand new Smash Brothers character. And for me, this was kind of a letdown. It is Pyra from Xenoblade Chronicles 2, an interesting addition. It also includes Mithra that you can switch to on the fly. The attacks for Pyra and Mithra look very cool. Rex also gets involved, but I wanted Crash Bandicoot. Like, I'm cool with all these first party Nintendo characters, but I feel like we have enough of them and enough representation of various franchises from Nintendo that I wanted to see a third party character get in. Of course, there are additional slots as well of characters that will be coming. So if Pyra is not a character for you, it's not the end of the world. For me, it was kind of of cool you know i wasn't a huge fan of xenoblade chronicles 2 please don't be too angry at me in the comments but a nice way to start things out with a super smash brothers character reveal and this character will be coming out pyra in march so not too long of a wait obviously there will probably be a sakurai related event for this character as well next up fall guys is coming to the nintendo switch finally obviously among us was very successful on the nintendo switch and i'm sure fall guys will be as well i played this game when it was free on psn and i I really didn't like it and there's sort of a joke going on on the spawn cast that oh when the game comes to the nintendo switch you'll all of a sudden like it but i, I really don't think i will i guess maybe with new players and everyone just starting out for the first time maybe it'll be kind of fun but I, I honestly probably am going to skip this game this game is coming out in summer of 2021 so it'll be interesting to see how the nintendo community reacts to that the outer wilds is coming to the nintendo switch now this game always gets confused with the outer worlds and honestly i was one of those people who would get these names intertwined i've actually never played this game i believe it is available on xbox game pass though but now it's coming to the nintendo switch i think it looks pretty cool space exploration stuff is always pretty fun it looks like it's going to be a well done version of the game and that game will be coming out in this summer as well Famicom Detective Club games are coming to the Nintendo Switch. I've never even like heard of these games before. I'm guessing they were something on the original Famicom. Obviously some text-based adventure games with some visuals overlaid on it, but this looks like it's a whole new redone thing for the Nintendo Switch. They are murder mystery games set in Japan, kind of a Phoenix Wright style of gameplay where you're basically trying to piece together clues, solve puzzles, and figure out what the hell is essentially going on. Not really my style of game per se. I do think the animations in the game looked kind of nice so there's lots of stuff in the background that i thought looked very striking and this series of games there's actually two of them will be coming out on may 14th so maybe something i will check out let me know in the comments if you are familiar with famicom detective club because i'm i'm not at all Samurai Warriors 5 is coming to the Nintendo Switch. I've played Samurai Warriors and Dynasty Warriors games. If you like games like Hyrule Warriors and you're not really attached to the Legend of Zelda characters in them, you just like the gameplay, this may be a game for you. These games are very fun. Obviously, there's a lot of combat going on, tons of enemies on screen. So I think this will be a nice addition to the Nintendo Switch. This game will be coming out in summer of 2021. So if you finished up Hyrule Warriors, although you haven't really finished it yet, as we'll talk about later on in the video, but you enjoy that style of gameplay, this may be a game you want to have on your radar. Legend of Mana is coming to the Nintendo Switch on June 24th. Now, this version of the game features HD graphics. It has a huge cult following, so it's nice to see this game sort of get revamped for the Nintendo Switch. It uses sprite characters on HD backgrounds, which I think looks pretty cool. There's a bunch of redone quality of life stuff. There's an arranged soundtrack if you want to use that as well. And like I said, this game has a pretty big cult following to it. People love this game. It's some people's favorite RPG of all time. Never played it because I did not own a Super Nintendo during that time frame so i might end up checking this out when it comes out on june 24th for the nintendo switch they also showed off another monster hunter rise trailer showing some of the darker environments and story elements from the game i'm really still blown away at how damn good this game looks that re engine is going over time on the nintendo switch it's a capcom trailer so i can't show too much on youtube because well capcom doesn't like it when you share their trailers don't take our trailers we're capcom but monster hunter rise is definitely one of the games i'm really looking forward to next month it's going to be an absolute banger the monsters themselves look absolutely incredible the game looks amazing 
Mario Golf is back, baby, with Mario Golf Super Rush. Now, do not sleep on Mario Golf games or Mario sports games in general. If you are younger, you might not care about these games, but these games were some of the best games on, like, the N64. And Mario Golf was a hell of a lot of fun on the N64. There was a GameCube version as well, and then Mario just kind of stopped golfing. I don't know. Maybe he got tired of it. Obviously, this game looks very, very striking visually. It's utilizing that sort of Mario style of visuals there's going to be various characters from the mushroom kingdom as well you have button and motion controls which is a nice variety so if you want to do some motion controls with some friends over you can do that or if you just want to do standard button controls you could do that as well there's a speed golf mode where everyone races together and they're like online and there's like even some little platforming and stuff going on with like special attacks and whatnot i think that looks really cool they didn't show off all of the game modes from the game of course they want to keep some things hidden there's actually going to be a story mode that has sort of an RPG leveling system that you use a me character to sort of learn the game and of course experience different things within the game. I'm absolutely stoked for this game. I love Mario Golf and I think this is going to be a great addition to the Nintendo Switch. It comes out on June 25th so the celebration of Mario is not ending folks. We have Mario Golf Super Rush coming to the Nintendo Switch and this was one of the games that I was definitely very excited for. Tales from the Borderlands comes out on March 24th. We talked about this game leaking recently due to the Taiwanese rating board and now it's coming out on March 24th it's a telltale game set within the Borderlands universe if you played a telltale game before you pretty much know what to expect I'm not the biggest fan of these games unless it's like a Batman or a back to the future because I like the source material so I will be skipping this one but if you like Borderlands you want more Borderlands stuff on your switch here you go March 24th Capcom Arcade Stadium will be available today so head over to the Nintendo Switch eShop if you want to check that out some Capcom Arcade games available to purchase just on your Nintendo Switch. Stubbs the Zombie! Stubbs the Zombie is coming out on March 16th. This is completely random. If you don't remember, Stubbs the Zombie was a cult hit on the original Xbox. It was an original Xbox exclusive, and I've never played it. It's kind of been going up in price over the years. But yes, Stubbs the Zombie is coming to the Nintendo Switch on March 16th, and I'm really looking forward to this game. I've always wanted to play it. It looks pretty wacky and weird, and I really like the setting of the game, so I was very excited to see this game coming to the Nintendo Switch switch. We got an update on No More Heroes 3 next. You're going to be facing aliens as the assassins in this version of the game. And in typical No More Heroes style, it looks very, very over the top. You, of course, have to do your side missions as well to get ranking points in order to challenge these different characters that you're going to be facing. There's a bunch of different types of combat and scenarios that you're going into. You see lots of different styles of games in these battles that they sort of teased. You can upgrade your death glove as well to get additional things and additional moves in the game. I think it looks very nice. I was a big fan of No More Heroes 1 and 2. Travis Touchdown, whatever that side game was, sucked ass, but I'm definitely looking forward to this. And we have a concrete release date for No More Heroes 3 of August 27th. Next up was a game called Neon White. It was a weird card-based game in which you move in a first-person perspective, taking out demons in heaven. Looks a little bit too out there for me, but I don't know. It might end up being fun. It does look very fast and fluid. This is a winter 2021 game. DC Superhero Girls Teen Power. Now, I understand that this game is not for me, and you know what? That's okay. I actually think the graphics and gameplay look pretty decent, but, you know, it's, it's, it's not really, it's not a game for me. It's not a game for me. But it'll be coming out on June 4th on the Nintendo Switch. Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborville was confirmed for the Nintendo Switch. We've, of course, talked about this game a bunch as well as being leaked for the Switch. It'll be coming out on March 19th. You notice a lot of March games are coming out. I'm looking at the Nintendo Switch upcoming games for the month of March, and I thought February was bad. March just completely tramples it. It's ridiculous. I've never played any of the Plants vs. Zombie games. Maybe I played one on the Xbox 360. I don't know. The gameplay looks fun. I might end up checking it out and like I said, it comes out in March. Miitopia, for some reason, is coming to the Nintendo Switch. This was originally a 3DS game, and now it's coming to the Switch. It's a weird sort of action RPG involving me characters. It'll be available on May 21st. Super Mario stuff invades Animal Crossing New Horizons. Could this be the thing that brings me into the latest Animal Crossing? This was some of the most fun stuff for me, collecting all the various Nintendo collectibles in the DS version of Animal Crossing. I don't know.
know if I'm going to pick it up. I do like all the Mario related stuff. I think it looks really cool. There is a patch coming out, an update patch for the game on February 25th, and these new items will be available to purchase in game with, of course, Nook points and all that stuff on March 1st. Project Triangle Strategy is a new tactical RPG that honestly has the same sort of visual style as Octopath Traveler. I'm kind of surprised they didn't make it a Final Fantasy Tactics game. I'm, I guess there still is time if they want to make it a Final Fantasy Tactics game, but it is Square Enix, so who really knows what they're going to do? I think the combat system looks really good, the visuals look really nice, and I liked what they showed from this game, but I felt like they went a bit too in-depth with some of the mechanics. This was one of the longer trailers of the presentation, and it's like if you don't care about tactical RPGs, you probably didn't care about it all that much. It's coming out in 2022, so it's a long ways away, but there is an available demo to download right now on the Nintendo Switch eShop if you want to check out this game. So Project Triangle Strategy, obviously that's not the final name of it, but hopefully they come up with something better. A free-to-play online game set in between Star Wars Episode 6 and 7 called Star Wars Hunters is coming in 2021, and they really didn't show anything from it, but I think it has potential. Knockout City is an online Switch game from EA with a variety of different characters. You're sort of playing like a dodgeball-like game in a team setting with a ball that can explode. There's large levels. It's kind of, you know, one of those Ninjala or Splatoon-style games, you know, very stylized, that sort of, you know, artsy comic book animated style of visuals it looks kind of interesting i am wondering about the price of this is this going to be a free-to-play game with microtransactions or are they going to try and charge 60 dollars because i don't think that would work out too well this game will be coming out in may of 2021 world end club it looks kind of neat it's a side scrolling game from Nis america i don't know it's very japanese as well so if you like games like this you'll like this may 28th hades is going physical and now i can actually buy this game because i have not bought hades yet the physical the physical version of the game comes with a soundtrack download, a 32-page character compendium, and it'll be coming out on March 19th, another game coming out in March that I need to buy. I definitely want the physical version of this game, and I did hear it was really good, so I guess it is about time I played this. Ninja Gaiden is coming back to the Nintendo Switch. Finally! Like, it's been so damn long. With the Ninja Gaiden Master Collection featuring Ninja Gaiden Sigma, which was the first Ninja Gaiden that came out on the Xbox, a port of it, an enhanced port of it, Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2, which was Ninja Gaiden 2 on the Xbox, and then Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge, which was, of course, available on the Wii U. Three games in one. I've played all of these games. I love Ninja Gaiden games. These games are hard as hell. Sigma, uh, uh not Sigma, Razor's Edge absolutely kicked kicked my ass on the Wii U. Like that game was hard as hell, but I had fun trying to figure it out. And it's great to see Ninja Gaiden come home. Of course, everyone loves the Ninja Gaiden trilogy on the NES. Now we have a new trilogy for the Nintendo Switch. All DLC from these versions of the game is included as well. Comes out on June 10th. Definitely very excited for this. Three games in one. I mean, things like that get me very hype. There's DLC coming to Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. I told you you weren't finished with that. There's an expansion pack coming with some new stuff for Link. There's going to be new characters and new scenarios added into the game as well. They showed up a little graphic, but they didn't get too deep into it. I'm sure that'll be in like a future video or some sort of trailer for that. It's coming for $20. So if you enjoyed Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, you finished it up. Well, now you got a lot more stuff to look forward to. We got a little sizzle reel with Bravely Default 2, Ghosts and Goblins. Saga Frontier Remastered, which is coming out on April 15th. I never played the original Saga Frontier. I believe this was a PS1 game. Could be wrong on that. Might have been a Super Nintendo. Don't crucify me. I never played it, though. I think the visuals look really nice. It's sort of a sci-fi RPG, and I might actually end up checking that out. We got our first look at Apex Legends running on the Nintendo Switch, and really, I think it looked pretty good, all things considered. I was definitely looking forward to seeing how this game would perform visually and in terms of just frame rate and things like that on the Nintendo Switch and I think it looks pretty solid. Of course, this is a free-to-play game, so I will definitely be checking it out. There's a lot of new people who have never played it. I played it a little bit on the Xbox One, but I will dive in with you guys and play some random Apex Legends on the Nintendo Switch when it comes out on March 9th. Here we go. Anuma, he's on screen. What's he talking about? Breath of the Wild 2, is he giving it to me? No. No, he tells you, piss off. We have nothing to talk about with Breath of the Wild 2. Get the hell out of here if you want Breath of the Wild 2 stuff. We'll talk about it later on in the year, but there's another Legend of Zelda game coming, and this 
this this was the highlight of the show for me because if you've been watching my videos lately we of course have been talking about the legend of zelda 35th anniversary and there is one mainline game in the legend of zelda franchise that i have never finished and that is the legend of zelda skyward sword because i did not like the motion controls i couldn't really get into them they i just i just didn't like them i wanted a more traditional way to play this game well skyward sword hd is coming to the nintendo switch and i was so happy i i got this big stupid grin on my face when this was announced it is an hd version of skyward sword from the wii which desperately needed it because that visual style was great but it was sort of confined to the wii which was not an hd system so a beautiful looking game the art style is absolutely tremendous and now we can play it on the nintendo switch with motion controls they still got the motion controls you got the joy cons and stuff but wait but wait, there is going to be a more traditional control system, which supposedly couldn't be done, but I guess Nintendo figured out a way to do it. Basically, your right analog stick is going to be your sword. You hit down on it to swing down, left and right, uh, to swing left and right, and up to swing up. Look, this is way better than using motion controls as a mandatory thing. Maybe I will play some with motion controls, and then I will switch to this other control style that is much more standard and much more, you know, just something I want. I want a more more traditional control style so if you have a switch light do not worry you can still play this game i'm so stoked for this game and it looks like they are kicking off the legend of zelda celebration much earlier than they are the mario one that happened last year skyward sword hd will be coming out on july 16th and you know what they they could have ended it right here and that would have been fine with me like i would have been completely happy you, get, you gave me my skyward sword hd some interesting game announcements but they had one more thing that i actually thought was very interesting and the final thing was Splatoon 3. Now, for some reason, this game isn't coming out until 2022, so don't get your hopes up to see it this year or anything like that, but they showed off a little bit of Splatoon 3, and it's kind of weird to me because I honestly feel like Splatoon 2 was a Wii U game that was ported over to the Switch. I think they wanted to release Splatoon 2 on the Wii U, but the system sales were just so bad because that game sold so well on the system. This actually looks like a more proper evolution of the Splatoon series. Everything looks bigger and better. There's more stuff going on as well obviously we're gonna learn a lot about this game closer to the release date of it in 2022 but i guess they just wanted to show off that a new splatoon was in development since splatoon 2 stuff has of course come to an end as far as dlc is concerned so overall what did i think about the nintendo direct was it worth this long wait that we had see that's the weird thing because to me we haven't had a long wait i don't know why people get so hung up on like the subtitling of these nintendo directs because to me a nintendo direct mini is still an Nintendo Direct is just not quite as long. Some of the Nintendo Direct minis we got last year were absolutely fantastic. We learned about all sorts of new stuff coming to the Nintendo Switch. So to me personally, I haven't been waiting long for a Nintendo Direct. Now I, I am sure some people will be like, oh, where's Bayonetta 3? Where's Metroid Prime 4? Why aren't these games at this event? But I don't really think they were ever going to be at this event. I think those games still have more time to cook and they're not quite ready to talk about it. Everything that we saw at this event though, as far as new stuff like Mario Golf, of course, Skyward Sword HD, Splatoon 3, a new RPG from Square, a tactical RPG from Square Enix. I thought the variety overall was really great because there was something for everyone at this event. Whether you are a little kid who wants to play Fall Guys and you can't play it because you don't own a PlayStation 4 or something, now you can do that. Whether you're a young girl who wants to play something like the DC superhero game that features all the little kitty girls and stuff like that, now you got something for you. Whether you're a longtime Nintendo fan like myself with Skyward Sword HD, HD like there was something for everyone in this and I think that's sort of going to get lost I think some people will be honestly disappointed with this event but I was not one of them I was absolutely enthralled in this event I loved all of the new announcements even if they weren't for me because you got to remember Video games are supposed to be for everyone, and that's pretty much what Nintendo does. They try to show you games that are games for everyone. There's still gonna be more games that are coming out this year. There's still gonna be more game announcements. Overall though, I really enjoyed this Nintendo Direct presentation. I like the new games that they showcased. I wasn't too big of a fan of Pyra. Like, come on, give, give me Crash. Give me Crash! But I thought overall there was something for everyone in this presentation, and that's what Nintendo Directs are supposed to be. When you look at what PlayStation is doing so far this year, and what Xbox is doing, so far this year in terms of software i think nintendo comes out smelling like roses you got a great variety of first party and third party stuff 
announced for the Nintendo Switch coming out. A lot of it's coming out very soon, as in the first half of this year. What's the longest wait for a game that has a release date like July, August? Like, that's pretty good, I feel. So there's a lot of stuff coming out to the Nintendo Switch. And of course, there's always going to be more surprises as well. So let me know in the comments section down below what you thought of this Nintendo Direct. Were you a bit disappointed with it? Did you wish that there was games like Metroid Prime and, of course, Bayonetta 3 there? Or were you satisfied with what you got and you're happy because Skyward Sword is coming to the Switch? I can't believe that. I'm so glad they did that. That makes me so happy because now I can finally finish that damn game. And as always, thank you for checking out this video. Be sure to check out the video from earlier today where we talk about the NES and SNES games that came out on the Switch that... Well, they sucked, but, you know, we had fun playing them. And as always, guys, I will catch you guys on the next video. Later.